If you are ready to do your goal planning for the next year, look no further than this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how you can set up some digital goal planning inside of Airtable. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about it, do check out the links that I'll include with this video. Don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable software. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen and into the heart of this video. We are talking about goal planning and specifically OKRs. Now, if you're not familiar with OKRs, it stands for Objective and Key Results. This is a, a form of goal tracking that was made very popular within the tech community within the last uh, several you know, decade or so. So that being said, the idea is at a high level, you have an objective. You can think of that as your main goal, but then you have a bunch of things that you have to do that drive the output for that goal, right? And those things are your key results. So essentially you have in database speak, what we would call a one to many relationship with this hierarchy. You've got this objective that's kind of a big picture and then you have it like trickle down into a number of smaller pieces and those are the key results. So for example, you could say something like, uh, we are going to increase revenue by 20%. And we are going to, that would be your objective. And in order to get that objective, you would say things like, I'm going to increase ad spend by $1,000 per month. And we're going to monitor the return on investment for our ad spend and make sure that it, you know, has this certain output. And, you know, we're going to hire a new person to manage the blog or, you know, whatever those things are. Those are your key results that are driving to your major objective, right? Which is to increase revenue. So in this case, what I've done is I've set forth a little bit of a template here. Feel free to download this. I'm going to include a link so you can get access to this template if you're interested in doing your goal planning in a digital way. That being said, let's just kind of get into what we have. Of course, we've got two tables, pretty straightforward and obvious objectives. This is the high level thing. And then we've got our key results. Now, one thing to note is we've got a bunch of different views here. And if you're new to Airtable, you're going to notice that the view is set up in a way that allows you to see a snapshot of the data. So it's kind of like you can think of it as pre-filtered or pre-organized data that is specific to whatever this you know, name of the view is. So in these cases, we're tracking objectives by quarter. I personally, I don't know if all companies do this when they do their OKRs, but personally, I found this to be the most rewarding. And so when I set up my objectives, I'm doing it at a quarter and a year basis. And then this is doing all of the planning for me. So as you put a new objective in and you designate a certain quarter and year, then it gets automatically filtered into these different places. So if I were to click into all records, for example, you're going to see that I've got stuff back in Q1 2020. It's all example stuff, right? And then we kind of go through chronologically all the different objectives. But as we click through these different views, we've got them set up with these different filters. And so we're getting snapshots of specific stuff. So in this case, We've got previous quarter, current quarter, and next quarter. And this is great if you're just kind of keeping an eye on your business or your life as you plan your goals. So you might look back and say, hey, previous quarter, how do we do? Current quarter, you know, how are we on track? Next quarter, do we have our plan in place, right? And same thing with the key results, except this is a more micro view when you flip over here. Now, something of note is, and again, this is a, if you're new to Airtable, you have a linked relationship between the objective and the key result. So inside on the, on the back end build of this uh, template, we actually connect objectives to key results. And this is part of the power of a relational database. So you can actually see that linked relationship and track progress throughout this entire process. So first things first, Let's add an example new uh, new uh, objective, and I re I mean uh, named this improperly, so this should be add a new objective. So let's go ahead and name a new objective here, and we have a form that we've built out for this. We can go ahead and open the form, and note that you can also make things required. So I might say, hey, before we get to this, we're going to say that it's it's a requirement that you fill out the quarter, the year, the uh, the name, and I, I like to identify things by source, meaning like what part of my life do they pertain to? Is this personal? Is this business, etc.? 
and then who is in charge. So I should point out that you can use many different people in the same organization can, can also use this template and everyone can have his or her own personal view. So once we've got that, we can go ahead and open this form and we are able to now fill out information. It's going to go directly into our planning, our objective uh, OKR database. So let's say I had a new uh, plan for 2021 where I wanted to, maybe this was like in the health department and I wanted to, uh, you know, lose 10 pounds. So I would establish a quarter for this. Right now we're in Q4. So this is kind of planning towards 2021. So I would say Q1 and I can come down here and just put in the appropriate year. Now in terms of source, uh, is this business, family? You can add your own sources so you can have personal health and different things like that. Since I don't have one for health, I'll just say family in this case. And then of course, choose who on your team is gonna be uh, responsible for this objective. Once you've submitted that, you then have the opportunity to create other objectives by submitting more responses. But let's look at what happened on the back end. Flipping back into the database, we can see now if we go into next quarter, again, I'm in Q4 2020, so this next quarter is Q1 2021, and this is already filtering in here, right? So automatically, it knows where it belongs in you know, the chronological order of things, and so it puts it in here. So from here now, I need to go into my results and actually build my result out. So I already have in my next quarter view, I've got you know, two results built for each of these things. So maybe I'm gonna set up some rules that are gonna help me reach that objective of losing 10 pounds. So maybe I wanna do some conditioning or, or you know, more conditioning exercises. So I'll flip into my form here. Again, this is at the results level. I'll open my form for the results. Notice there's a difference between the objective form here and the key results form here. And now I can say, well, what's my key result gonna be for this particular objective? Uh, so for example, I might say uh, conditioning exercise for 30 minutes a day, and this might be 15 days per month. So whatever kind of metric that you're going to establish to make sure that you're driving a result that produces the overall objective that you're looking to uh, achieve. Now, of course, I want to connect this to the proper objective. So I'm going to need to find it in the list. And this particular one is lose 10 pounds and I then submit. So that's where I'm establishing that linked relationship from the result to the objective that it's related to. Now, I might want to submit another response as well. Maybe I'm going to uh, eat red meat, eat less red meat, maybe only uh, four times per month. Just making it up here, I'm not a health coach, so forgive me if that's not exactly aligned with, uh, with proper uh, nutrition. But let's suppose that that was your particular key result that you were targeting. Go ahead and submit that again after connecting it to the right thing. Now, once we flip back into the database, again, I can go to my key results and I can see my quarter here. And now I've got a nice layout. So here I've got my lose 10 pounds objective and these are grouped by that objective. And I now see that I have these different things that we're tracking. Now, I can also take notes on these throughout the quarter. So as time you know progresses, maybe I say, um, maybe as I'm going, I say, actually, uh, I, I was losing too much uh, muscle mass. And so I decided to up this to five days per month. This of course is for somebody who's really, really particular in tracking, uh, you know, obviously their health and, and fitness. So that is something that you could then come in with notes and add, you know, uh, amendments, if you will, to these different uh, results. But then the big picture here is, is it completed or not? So at the end of the quarter, you're going to need to come in and mark that off and make sure that you're meeting your goals. So let's say you did hit your goal on nutrition, but you weren't hitting your, or excuse me, my results, my key results. Let's say I hit them on nutrition, but I didn't hit them on exercise. Maybe I didn't get out there as much as I had hoped to. So now I'm going to have a somewhat incomplete objective. To see that visually, we can flip over into our apps on this template. So I've chosen to install a Gantt chart here that's going to give me the visualization that I want to see all of my goals and uh, or objectives and key results. So if I pop this open, 
This is showing me, again, what I'm looking at on that other screen, but this is nice and color-coded and kind of spelled out a little bit more clearly. So here I am grouped by the objective. Again, that's the high level, the macro view. And then I've got my key results that are relating to that objective inside of that grouping. And now I get this nice visual cue as to whether something's been marked complete or not. Now, I should point out that I don't actually have to go back into that grid view. I can actually access this underlying data directly inside of this Gantt chart. So let's say over here I've got this objective of making more time for family. And I have the key results of eat dinner as a family 20 nights a week and keep this TV, keep the TV turned off until 7 p.m. If we hit all of these key results, if we are on track, I can mark them complete directly from this, uh, this Gantt chart. So I can just pop in here and it's expanding that particular record that I'm clicking on. I can then edit the data for that record. And you see, as I do that, it updates the, my visual cues on my Gantt chart. Very, very powerful tool, especially if you're new to Airtable. Check this out. Check out our template and explore all the things you can do. I've built all of the date logic into this already and saved you the effort of needing to go in and figure out how to bring things into the previous quarter, current quarter, etc. So now you have one nice place where all of your stuff lives and you can track it as you go throughout the year. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.